welcome students myself mr ahiro va from the department of instrumentation and control engineering maratha vidya prasarak sampradas karmavir advocate baburao ganpatrao thakre college of engineering nasik here we are going to learn the extension of range of ammeter and the design of multi range ammeter objective to learn the extension of range of basic ammeter and design of multi range ammeter outcome students will be able to design and implement multi range ammeter with range extension dc ammeter now how we can extend the range of the basic pmmc instrument which is a basic dc ammeter the moving coil instrument that is a pmmc instrument has a coil wound with very fine wire it can carry only several microamperes to few milliamperes safely to give the full scale deflection for measuring higher current a low resistance is connected in parallel to the instrument to bypass the major part of the current the low resistance connected in parallel with the moving coil is called as the shunt as shown in the diagram in parallel with the basic pmmc instrument a shunt resistance rsh is connected the resistance value of the shunt can be calculated using the conventional circuit analysis here rsh is equal to the shunt resistance in ohms rm is the coil resistance im is equal to ifs which is the full scale deflection current ish will be the current which will flow through the shunt and i will be the current to be measured the voltage drop across the shunt and the meter must be same as they are connected in parallel therefore ish into rsh is equal to im into rm but the shunt current that is ish can be written as i minus im substituting the value of ish in equation number 1 we get the equation for rsh is equal to im into rm upon i minus im if you will divide numerator as well as denominator by im then we get the equation as rsh is equal to rm upon i upon im minus 1 if you will express the ratio of current to be measured that is i upon the meter current im by the letter m then equation 3 can be written as rsh is equal to rm upon m minus 1 now in this way we can extend the range of basic ammeter by simply connecting a resistor in shunt with the meter now how we can go for 
the design of multi range emitter there are two methods to design multi range emitter first method is the individual shunt method this uses different shunts depending upon the number of current ranges and the second method the universal or ayrton shunt method it uses a single shunt having the tappings for every current range now we will see here the first method that is the individual shunt method let the four ranges for which we have to go for the design of multi range emitter are i1 i2 i3 and i4 such that i1 less than i2 less than i3 and which is less than i4 as shown in the circuit diagram all these shunts those are the individual shunts are connected in parallel with the basic meter having the internal resistance of rm and for the particular current range the corresponding shunt register will be selected with the help of a switch now the same equation is applicable so we can write the value of rsh1 is equal to rm upon m1 minus 1 where m1 is equal to i1 upon i fs in general rsh n is equal to rm upon mn minus One, where n is equal to one, two, three, etc. That depends upon how many ranges we have to convert the basic emitter to form a multi-range emitter. Make before break switch. Whatever switch is being used. in the case of individual shunt method if you will use a simple switch then that switch will take a small finite time to get switched from one position to another one or from one shunt to another shunt during this small finite time the current to be measured which is greater than the full scale current of the meter will flow through the meter as no any shunt will be connected during this fi small finite time and hence the high current than the capacity of the meter may damage the meter and hence there is a requirement of a special switch which is known as the make before break switch now as the name indicates make before break so it means that it will make the contact with the next one first and then it will break the contact with the previous one as shown in the diagram if the switch needs to be moved from position b to c then it is having a wider contact area what will happen with that area when you will go on switching from b to c then it will first make the contact with c and when it will get fully switched to c then it will break the contact with b in this way during the switching for that small 
finite time both the shunts will be getting connected across the meter and thus they will prevent the meter from getting damaged due to excessive current the second method is the ayrton that is the name of the scientist who have discovered this one or the universal shunt method now let's assume that there are three ranges i1 i2 and i3 but there will be a single shunt which is called as an universal shunt or the ayrton shunt this shunt is having the different tappings and these tappings depends upon the currents to be measured but the whole shunt will be there for the minimum current of i1 let three currents are having the relationship i1 less than i2 and it is also less than i3 when the switch will be at position 1 then current i1 will flow and that will get splitted or divided into the current which will flow through the complete shunt having the value r1 and meter current im thus we can write im into rm is equal to i1 minus im into r1 rewriting this for the value of r1 r1 is equal to rm upon m1 minus 1 so this equation is similar to the earlier method that is the individual shunt method when the switch will be at position 2 then i1 will not flow because we are feeding i2 and hence we can write im into rm plus r1 minus r2 which is equal to i2 minus im into r2 therefore r2 is equal to r1 plus rm upon m2 similarly if you will write the equation for switch at position 3 then we will get the final equation for r3 as r3 is equal to r1 plus rm upon m3 remember here m1 m2 and m3 are the ratio of current to be measured that is i1 or i2 or i3 upon the full scale meter current i fs you may refer these two books first by ak sony electrical and electronics measurements and instruments and the second by david bell electronic instrumentation and measurements thank you